producing boom force multi-purpose thick bleach clings to a sparkle and kills germs all around the house boom force multi-purpose thick bleach blast clean protect trade kings improving lives Welcome back to the Diamond Breakfast. We get into a very interesting conversation, and this is around a political party that some people may feel is just for old people. This is UNIP, and looking into the United National Independence Party, um, this is one party I think that has managed to participate in politics, has been running for such a long time, but looking at where they're coming from and where they are today, it looks like this party doesn't really have the mark it once had on this country but it looks like they're reviving things rebranding and shaping things around and today we do have tanya malama fuchs who is their spokesperson running us through what is up the unique sleeve are they ready to bounce back into the political champions league and do they have what it takes to stay in the league well we get to find out from her as we engage on this and much more now tanya Looking at where this, um, where UNIP is coming from, I mean, look, uh, they, I mean, this has been one of so one of the most richest parties um, in in this country. But liberated, um, you know, from British colony in 1964, um, the, and that's the time that Zambia did gain its independence. And later, the first Republican president and Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, um, you know, losing the reins to then president um, of the MMD, and that was uh, uh, Dr. Frederick Chilova. Is, you know, UNIP ready to come back um, into this playing field because so much has changed um, and people just feel UNIP is for old people? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank you for having me on the show, first yeah. of all. Um, and your sentiments are echoed by many people. <clears throat> and a lot of the times that happens because people aren't seeing change and progress happening. Mm. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a tough few years, I guess, for the party. Um, a, a lot of years where um, the, the move to multi-party democracy obviously impacted the party and the way it used to operate previously. Um, but then during that time, it, it was transitioning as well. And I guess it didn't necessarily get a proper foothold on who it was going to be in this new multi-party democracy system. Mm. Um, subsequently, times have changed. So um, uh, Bishop Mwamba, Trevor Mwamba, is now the president of UNIP. And he came in and um, initially after a bit of a stumbling, um, we're now in a position where he's ready to take this party in the right direction. So it's taken a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. It's taken, um, you know, like with all things, you have to go through growing pains. Right. And we're now at the other side and we're ready to build this into a, a party that's definitely viable on the, land, uh, on the, on the landscape here in Zambia. Um, the people who are now a part of it have very different views to pre previous people. Mm. So um, you'll see there'll be younger, more professional people coming through and our folks Focus isn't um, what's going on internally in the party, but what we can do for the people. Mm. I love that. But, you know, you being a new face also, I think, to, to many people, they're probably wondering, ah, UNIP is coming back. What's going on? Who's that spokesperson? So I, I know, look, you... you I have worked with a lot of technology companies, and I know tech is a big conversation anyway, but outside that, um, you've worked with firms in the UK, you've worked with fir uh, firms in Spain, and now you are placed, you know, back here in Zambia and representing um, UNIP. So who is Tanya Fuchs? Because I know we're going to be seeing a lot of your face, but just so people can have understanding as to who you are. Of course. Right. Uh, so I am Zambian born. Um, mm -hmm. I was born in Mansa and I spent a lot of my early years here in Zambia um, up until a, a period when I was around about 14 and uh, my parents sent me to school abroad. I was at boarding school. Mm. And um, I was back and forth up until they then decided that um, things were in a bit tough in Zambia for them and they decided to transition back to the UK. At that time, I was like 17, 16, 17. I was mm. ready to come back to enjoy Zambia and my parents said, nope, 
we're staying in the UK. Yeah. So for me, Zambia has always been a part of me. Um, and I can tell you for about 10 years, I always said, I'm going back, I'm going back. And I never did. And you transition to life over there. I got married, had a child, lived in Spain, lived in the UK worked in the companies, chose marketing as my field of um, expertise that I wanted to go into, and you separate yourself, you know. And But I did have this hankering always for Zambia. Um, it was probably just before COVID mm. that I reconnected. I actually connected with the uh, Zambian embassy um, in the UK and um, built some good relationships with them, did a couple of things like International Women's Day with them. Um, I launched a magazine with them as well and it was called Inspire Zambia and so it just really brought me back to home and I was like I do miss home so the minute COVID was like over and we could leave I said bye I'm out of here <laughs> <laughs> so jumped on a flight came back right. and um, I initially came for three months and I haven't left so that wow. was two years ago Wow. and so during that time um, I've kept in touch with a lot of people I still have family I speak Zambian I speak Bemba I speak Zambian that's what I say in the UK yeah. I speak Bemba I speak Nyanja as well so um, I'm very in touch in that sense I'm um, I have my ear to the ground a lot and so the opportunity came up Bishop Mwamba approached me and um, asked me if I would be interested in the post and I was um, initially I had to think about it obviously of course. I mean politics exactly <laughs> Zambian politics. Yeah. So you have to ask yourself, um, am I going to be adding value here or will I be participating in the mm, noise? Mm. And I outrightly am here to add value. So whatever previous uh, stuff has been happening, I'm not yeah. looking to be a part of that. Um, I want to take my experience that I've learned and I want to apply that to the party. And so I want to modernize the party. Mm. I'm one of a few people. I'm not the only one. This is not all hinging on me. Yeah. But of what I'm bringing, um, a lot of it is to modernize the party, to right. bring it up to you know uh, the digital age. Um, and and there are old ways that work in Zambia, but there's new ways that that will work as well. You mm. know, the, the world landscape has changed, mm. and I want to I want to reduce that separation that I see in Zambia. Well, we can only wish you the very best with that. But um, you know, look, speaking into rebranding and how um, I just gotta ask, how is Unique looking to to rebrand themselves? You know, like I did um, say, there's a lot of sentiments that this party is for the old timers, is for the freedom fighters, mm -hmm. you know, it's the freedom fighting party um, <laughs> out there. So how are you looking to just, you know, reconnect with Zambian people and especially with the youth? Because remember that that is the mass majority of voters we're looking to see come 2026. Yeah, um, look, the rebranding, it's, it's, it's two-pronged, right? Um, uh, UNIP has a strong heritage. You know, the Founding Fathers uh, created um, uh, quite a phenomenal uh, system, if you look at it. Mm. Uh, claiming independence, being self-sufficient, setting up the country so that it was self-educating, self-economic development happening. Um, it was the change to multi-party democracy that did shift things in that sense. Now, what I'm trying to say is it was very successful in those early stages. And what has happened is we've lost the value of the self-development, the self-improvement, the uh, you know uh, good education. Then the world has changed, right? We've got a global world that's that's at play now. Mm. Um, I'll give you a stat. So uh, we've got 20 million people in Zambia. Did you know that 16 million people have a mobile phone in Zambia? Did you know that uh, di uh, data has doubled? The purchase of data has doubled. Mm. So the people are changing. You can't expect the political party to still be saying the same things from independence. Right. The time is not the same as that. But what we have are great foundations. And a lot of that still stands. It's about education. It's about humanism. Humanism is actually just another way of saying self-development, mm. right? And everybody now once is doing self-development. We're improving ourselves, whether we choose to be entrepreneurs, whether we choose to work in a system, um, everybody wants to be better. We want to have a better economy. We want to be self, uh, our, our economic state, we want to improve our economic state. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's happening everywhere. But the foundations, if you really look at them, they haven't changed. Right. So what we're just doing is like, how do we modernize that? How do we apply it to the world as it is today? And like you say, talking about the youth, yes, the youth are the biggest voter. 
don't forget that during UNEP times, the people, the fighters, they were basically the youth, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. we're looking at the same type of people, but now they're not fighting for independence. They're fighting for self-development, for, for a good economic uh, personal state. And that's what we want to help with. So right. there's been enough rhetoric and talk. If, if they're going to vote for you, they have to believe in what you say. So that transparency is important. We have to be able to say that we're going to do X, Y, Z. You know, the, the STEM um, education process is vital. You know, STEM is, is it, it hinges on uh, the digital platforms, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Mm -hmm. That's all tech, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's what our, student, our people should be looking at as their education. Now, science could also be agriculture, which is a fundamental part of right. our economy. Right. You know, it, uh, mining could also be engineering. So we have to modernize the way that we do our education so it applies to our children of today or our youth of today. Right. So. Now, speaking of, um, speaking of today, we take a look into just where UNIP is. You know, you do have um, Bishop Trevor Mumba being um, the president, but you also have wrangles within the political party. And, you know, for, for a party that is looking to rebrand um, itself, you've got factions within the group, um, within the political party. How, how is... You need now looking to resolve those issues and ensure that even with the rebrand, people are able to see that one voice of you need. Absolutely. Just to confirm, uh, there are no factions in okay. UNIP. Um, a lot of that started um, um, in 2022, where there was an attempt to take over. Um, now, it was dealt with at the time. Legal action was brought against those people, um, and injunctions have been put in place so that it doesn't happen again. So if anyone is claiming to be UNIP, um, if anything, they're, they're likely to be in contempt of court. So if um, Bishop Mwamba is the president of the UNIP party, there are members within the UNIP party who have been there from before who are still there and they believe in what he is going to be doing under UNIP. Mm -hmm. So, But what we've got is stories that are still being told. But like I said, that was 2022. Right. This is not that same time. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now, also, um, you know, is is he also excited to be taking um, the party forward again? Some people, you know, where, where parties looking to rebrand, I'm sure people are looking to see more young people also, um, you know, within this political party and leading some of those key positions. Are we expecting to see that? Well, I hope um, I at least don't look like the old people in the party. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> so he he is um, taking the time to consider the position and the transition that it needs to go through. Mm. Um, he is a bishop, and I will say this, that he's got fundamental core uh, beliefs, and he sticks to those core beliefs, and he's learning how to adjust his core beliefs to this modern way of being. So he's seen the fractions, he's seen what needed to be done, that has been dealt with. And now he's taking the time to bring in new people. So slowly, over the next few months, you will start to see new faces as well. And he knows, he understands, there has to be a professional face to it. There has to be a younger face to it. And we have to go away from that shallow politics that hi historically has been there. The infighting, that's not politics, mm. right? Let's go back to the fundamentals of politics. And it's about being elected to do on behalf of the people and so what do the people want what are they asking for and those you'll start to see as we go along you'll start to see more of that so we'll be making our decisions around mm. what does education look like what do we want in terms of infrastructure you know making uh, the digital landscape a much stronger aspect of of um, the way that we operate moving forward so a lot of stuff is being done it will take a while to roll it out slowly um, but you'll you'll if you have me back here I'll give you a lot more information around that <laughs> I hope so because 2026 is just right around 100%. the corner you don't have much time exactly. really um, you know to to do what you need to do but it's not to say it's not possible people Zambia a lot of Zambian people feel there is no strong opposition party. Um, and how how now do you think UNIP is looking to, to cover that? Because, you know, like I said, we're already um, running out of time. The election year is about, you know, I would say about 
a year, under two years away, um, you know, if we're, if we're being realistic with it. So what is UNIP looking to bring to the table to fill out that gap where Zambians feel there is no strong um, opposition party? Yeah. And, and obviously this is part of the reason that we're going through this. Um, like I said, getting rid of that shallow politics mm. that's been happening. It doesn't actually go or, or focus on the actual needs of the people. That infighting, that wrangling, that is no longer something that we definitely, we, that we want to be a part of. Our focus is going to shift into being um, um, a useful voice against the current party that's there. Mm. And by that I mean if a government um, implements um, any new legislation or for example some of the recent activity where they've um, had new deals that have come about the debt restructuring for example our position is to review those things and really look at it fundamentally to the people of Zambia who is going to benefit from this right and then to push it so that we say look it looks like some are benefiting but others are not and we would like to see you do more of this side of things and that's really what we're going to push for mm -hmm. to be a, a useful opponent to the incumbent party um, but of course eventually we want to be um, the main party that's there because we know we've got good we've got co good core values and we want to bring that to the people um, so that's our, our that's our aim the political process um, I think we, we, we've got a good opportunity here in the next year and a half to really show the Zambian people what we're working on who we want to be and like I said transparency right. is important they need to believe in us and we've got that time now to build upon that um, to, to make them learn who the new UNIP is to mm. stop judging us of old ways and then to give them hope for the new uh, the future Right. So now in conclusion, um, you know, what would your message be then, um, you know, to the people out there? Um, Ronald, like, you know, you know it, it's UNIP rev revamping, rebranding, um, trying to get back into the Champions League of, of politics. So what would be your message, you know, to people? The message really is about, uh, look, we're going back to our core values, so we want you to pick up back on those core values because we believe it applies in the Zambian homes now anyway. Mm. And if we align with those core values, then we're on the same page. Transparency is a huge part of what we're going to be, you know. Uh, we want to do things that are uh, open and people believe in us. We have to create that belief in the party. There's a lot of apathy, not just in UNIP, but in, you know, previous parties that have gone before for. They're creating an apathy where people no longer trust the political process mm. and we need you to believe in the political process again because ultimately that process is for the change of the people. It's not for the change of the next government that wants to come into power. Right. So if we can change the, the process for you, if your requirements get met, then we have delivered on your, on your, your asks. Mm -hmm. So belief, understanding, transparency and going back to the core values. Wow. Tanya Malama Fuchs, the new spokesperson for the UNIP uh, political party. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you so you, much. UNIP is rebranding. Are we, I guess we're going to see a lot more um, of UNIP also making the headlines as we lead up to the 2026 general elections. I personally am excited. It's always nice to see how far the political playing field can go. Could be could this be the push that UNIP needed? Well we get to see what their plans and their strategy strategies are going to be moving forward. We want to dive into looking into the world of business, seeing what is happening as Aubrey also talks about the charcoal market. It's a time where load shedding is at its high and people are pretty much fed up of it. But also again People are looking to different ways of managing. While some businesses are suffering, it looks like others are booming. Aubrey, over to you. into our business segment this morning. Of course, we start with our quarter review as we begin. And of course, uh, later on, Thank you so much.